Tonight, the Northwest is the heart attack capital of the country, according to the British Heart Foundation. The charity says that twice as many people die from coronary disease here compared to in the South. They say more research is needed to prevent them and to improve treatment. Tonight, we're looking at what we can do about it after this report from Ashley Derricott. Peter was 32 when a genetic condition caused a series of heart attacks. Being so young, naturally, it was a shock for him to come so close to death. Now he relies on a surgically implanted defibrillator to keep him alive, should his heart stop beating again. I wake up in the morning and think, well, is this going to be the day it's going to happen again? And I go to bed thinking, will it happen while I'm asleep? It's just never, it's always at the forefront of your mind. It never goes away. There are around 300,000 people now living with heart disease in this region. In Tameside, the problem's at its most acute, with among the highest rates of death in the country. There, it's almost three times higher than in one of the most affluent parts of London. Obesity is said to be a major contributor to risk, so two factors, such as smoking. At the University of Manchester, researchers try finding new ways of extending patients' lives, here they're exploring how to repair the organ tissue damaged by a heart attack. It basically just becomes a scar like anywhere else in the, in the body. It's incapable of contracting and therefore of pumping blood. So one question is, is it possible to either turn that scar back into healthy cardiac muscle or perhaps more likely repopulate the heart with other cells, for example stem cells, and regenerate cardiac muscle? For heart attack survivors like Peter, Life may well have changed, but the medical advances that helped to save him may one day keep him alive again. Ashley Derricott, ITV News, Manchester. Well, earlier we were joined by Dr Adam Greenstein, a senior lecturer in cardiovascular medicine at Manchester University. So why does he think that the North West has the highest death rate from coronary heart disease? I'd probably have to say lifestyle, I think, to begin with. Uh, a lot of people in the Northwest, uh, they're not as healthy as they should be, you know, because they smoke, they don't exercise, their diet's not as good as it could be. And I think that if people maybe took a little bit more responsibility for their health, then we would see a lot less heart disease. One of the new things that's come out is the the dreadful feeling of living in fear once you've had a heart attack of it happening again how tough is that for people to live with once you've had your heart attack you tend to get these really disabling symptoms you know for example chest pain or breathlessness or you're tired all the time and that can really limit you but then on the other hand you're scared and we're increasingly aware that this happens to a lot of people so they're scared that they may have another heart attack they're fearful they may not be able to do as much as they want to be able to do and I think all of this adds up to a very dangerous combination of psychological and physical symptoms. And what impact would that have on their family as well? They take on a different role in the family, they'll take on a role maybe as a carer whereas before you were a partner and an equal partner on an equal footing in the relationship and of course you're worried about your loved ones having another heart attack which could be fatal or could be even more debilitating or disabling than the first one. And then you're worried because your partner's not happy anymore. So what can we do about that? Well, I think we need to address this at a number of different levels. I mean, first of all, like you've already mentioned today, we need to talk about prevention, talk about getting the population healthier. And we've done a lot as society. For example, the smoking ban in public places has been wonderful. Increased awareness about your heart disease, but then also trying to find new cures for people so that they don't have to live with heart disease, so that we can improve how their heart functions and what their quality of life is like after they have a heart attack. Who is most at risk? Well, traditionally, it's people who may smoke, they may have a family history of heart disease. So, for example, if you have people in your family who've had a heart attack or a stroke or if high blood pressure runs in your family, if your blood pressure is high, maybe measured at your GP surgery or if you have high cholesterol. Also, people who are overweight and that combination of factors can be really quite dangerous. And are there early warning signs that we can look out for? A lot of people have heart attacks that just come out of the blue. Um, but then there are people 
who do get warning signs, and these warning signs can be tightness in the chest. So classically, this is described as almost being a bit like somebody sitting on your chest. So there's a tightness across your chest. You may be tired, or you may feel this tightness across your chest or breathless when you exercise. And so if you see yourself as being part of that target audience where maybe you have a family history, you smoke, you're overweight, you may know that you have high blood pressure and you start getting these symptoms when you exert yourself, then it's time to go and see your doctor. Doctor, thank you very much indeed for joining us. So if you'd like to find out more about dealing with heart disease and the Wear It, Beat It campaign, just go to our website at itv.com slash Granada.